TV. Hi, I'm Samantha Kumiko. Hey, I'm Kiara Gomez. And you're watching MREC TV. Peace, world. It's MREC for MREC TV. And I got a special guest in the building with me. My brother, introduce yourself to the people. My name is Chaz O. You know, representing Harlem. You know, in upstate New York. You know, Albany, Schenectady. You know, all that. What's up, people? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you bring into the game? Is it music or is it something else? Talk to us. Well, I have my own publishing company. So that's what I'm focused on right now. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as, you know, I like to inform people about the business and all that. But um, I'm an artist, too. I look more of myself as a songwriter, you know, not a recording artist because I don't, you know, look to go in, on tour and do shows. So, you know, as a songwriter, you're not, you know, you're not going on tour again per diem money. So what I'm bringing to the table is more just more behind the scenes, the songwriter and focus on my publishing company, you know, all that. Got you. Got you. Now, with that being said, how you going to bring attention to your publishing company? Well, I started out. Like, I always, I took marketing class in college, you know. Mm -hmm. People want to check. I post up my college transcripts on my Instagram, you know, Chazo underscore FMP. That's C-H-A-Z-O underscore FMP. And my business page, F-M-P underscore L-O-C. So, you know, I found different ways to market myself. You know, back in 2009, I had streaming cars, you mm -hmm. know, one of the ways I promoted myself, I was in a, a college demographic. So all all college students, you know, they're on computers, so it makes sense. Correct. But a lot of people wasn't on even streaming back then. So, you know, I tried different ways, bring attention to it. You know, people want to go with my, my gram. I got pics up there, you know. Um, 2010, I put my first artist out. Mm. Um, on iTunes, you gotta think about this, people. This is 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's documented. People won't go on my Instagram. It's documented. August 2nd, 2010. If you read the label that you know released the song, is my publishing company. What's the so, name of the company, good brother? Family Loyalty Order Win Music. You know, if you got those two, you order win. If you got family and loyalty, you order win. You know, yes, so if you, if you breathe it. It's flow music. Mm, you know? so, I like that. Yeah, I came up with that back in 2010. You know, I know people always talking about business and LOCs, but what I did is I'm a sole proprietor. Mm. So I got a, a DBA through the county clerk's office. That's on my post. That's on my page, too. You mm. know, I know people just talk, but I got proof. I got documentation and all that, mm. you know. So, you know, with that, I opened up my own business account. You know, that's on my gram, too. You know, mm. from back then, 2010, so people know I wasn't joking around. I was really focused, you know. So, you know, I put, cool. yeah, I put my first hours on iTunes. And people got to think of the time. It's 2010, you know. A lot of people were still putting stuff on Dot .piff, you know, yeah. live mixtapes. You know, if you, if you wasn't a independent artist signed to a major label or, uh, and if you know, an uh, independent major label like you know, back then I think it was Asylum, something like that, you know, a few mm -hmm. other labels. Mm -hmm. Rap artists wasn't getting put on iTunes like okay. that, you know. So, with me doing it, you know, I learned from a rock and roll artist, that's how mm -hmm. I know about TuneCore, you know, 12 years ago. So, a lot of people didn't think I was going to do it. So, you know, that's how I was bringing attention, just market on social media. You know, blogs was real heavy back then, too. Yes, sir. You yes, know? sir. Two and dope boys. Nah, right. Right, right. Exclusive zones. I remember all of them. Right, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what I was also doing is if I wasn't putting like a lot of, you know, a lot of not misinformation, but a lot of people don't have the information, even artists, you know, these care about being, you know, a rapper. So I was giving gems in to you know, younger artists, or artists my age, you know, I never hold information back. Mm -hmm. I should tell people about, you know, marketing strategies or, 
different, you know, PR companies to help get their stuff out there. Got you. So, you know, that's what I was doing, you know, so, yeah. Let me ask you this, though. So now the artist you put out like 10 years ago, Mm. how well did that project do for you? Did it do well? It didn't do well, but I wasn't looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. I was more of the experience. Mm. You know, that's what I, that's the main thing. Like the experience teach you more than anything. You Facts. know, so Facts. I was looking like, yo, I, I just put somebody on iTunes. Like everybody didn't think I was going to do it. Mm. You know, they didn't know that, you know, a rock and roll artist told me I got the information from a rock and roll artist, not even from a hip hop artist. Mm. You know, like, I went to college and I read books like uh, Ten Pan Alley and Rock and Roll Development. You know, rock and roll been around for years. Yes, sir. You know, they got a lot of information. All right. You got to think about the CEO of a uh, CEO of um or the former CEO of Interscope, Jimmy Iovine. He came from a rock and roll background, if I'm not mistaken. That's a fact. So you know they be always ahead of a curve. You mm-hmm. know that's what I realized when I started studying the game. So me putting my first hours on iTunes, you know, was like it was an accomplishment. I wasn't looking at the money. Gotcha. You know? Well, but, let me ask you this: now that artist. That you put on iTunes at that time was it hip hop? Was it rock and roll? It, it was hip hop. It was hip hop. It was more okay. of a, a, a like a dance style. No, but it was it was hip hop. Okay. Um, I just released the song again last week, being it was like the twelfth year anniversary. I released mm. it on all streaming platforms. People mm. got it. It wasn't on Spotify twelve years ago. Yeah, facts. It wasn't on title. You know? so, Trust me, I know. I was definitely putting out music back then, so I could relate. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I re- re-released the song again, you know. The whole time frame, you know, I was putting out music and everything, you know, seeing how the the landscape is as far as, like, mm-hmm. market promotion, you know. Because I, I ain't going to lie, like, like, I wasn't trying to put no no money into, like, you know, the blogs and all that. Like, I wanted to be more organic. I wanted to, you know, it to come to me. Correct. You know, so correct. Now, that's that's what's up. Now, let's fast forward, man, because I was going with your Instagram page yesterday, and just during the week, I seen you had some major looks um, with DJ Wala on Shea Four Five, and let's talk about that, man. Yeah, yeah, that was um, that was last last year, like late last year. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to him, though. You know, um, yeah, we did a, yeah, we did a great interview. You know, um, he be on Hot Nine Seven, um, Sirius XM Radio, and all that. It was right. an interview we did. Um, you know, I uh, release, um, Good Fool, Good Woman, Good Vibes. I call it the album, right? Mm. Um, so you know, we got spins on Sirius XM. He was spinning it. You know, um, I also released another song, um, called Can't Help It. Which got like it was getting like five hundred spins a week. Mm, that's a lot of spins. Well, but, on Shea Four Five? No, nah, not on Shea Four Five. Mm-hmm. It was. I, I, let me let me back up a little bit. So mm-hmm. the song while I was spinning was um it was more hip hop. It's called uh, Golden Era Vibe. You know, so nice. you know with Sirius XM Radio you can curse. Yes, sir. So I'm like, let me put this out for the streets. You know, so they can get in tune with that. So can't help it. It's more of like a girly song, you mm. know. So I released that on like different. Um, it wasn't top forty radio. It was like college radio and different other stations, you know. Um, so it was getting like five hundred spins a week. I got the reports on my Instagram too. One month in July, I was getting like two hundred spins a week, you know, That's like a lot of spins. That's major salute. Now, but I'm gonna give people gems I don't know. You know, I signed with ASCAP, right? Mm. What I learned is that they don't pay for top 40. If it ain't top 40 radio, they not going to pay. Oh, what? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's another lesson I learned, you know, from mm. publishing and all that. So them, them 500 spins I was getting, I wasn't getting paid, but I'm looking at, yo, people's hearing it, though. Yeah, but let me ask you this, though. Um, 
because you got different publishing companies. What um, radio stations you was garnering those spins on? What stations was those? Was it college? Was it underground internet? Radio. It was, it was underground. It was college. It was in different, um, you know, states, different regions too. Mm-hmm. T- Tennessee, nice. Memphis, Vegas, Ohio. Nice. Salute. So my thing was like, okay, don't worry about the money. You getting heard. Correct. Heard the country. Correct. Spends a week, so that's why I was more looking towards. You know? No doubt. Yeah. Now you coming from upstate as well as Harlem, describe your style. My style, um, a freestyle, I said it's a quote. I said, um, grind through the winter like an upstate nigga. Mm. Down in the summer like an age dub nigga. Mm. So that, that's like, you know, self-explanatory, you know. Up here, upstate is cold, you know, mm-hmm. so you gotta grind, you know. Um, my style is, you know, I, I like soul food music. You know, I like, I want to touch people's soul. I want to give people goosebumps. But, yes, sir. you know, I also, you know, like I said, I got, you know, talk to the ladies and all that, you know. Mm. You know, we, we love the ladies, so, you know. All day. You know, for real, so. Now, that's yeah. what's up. So, yeah. coming from where you come from, you wasn't, I guess, influenced by, like, you say Harlem, you got Dipset, you got Mace, you got Big L, you got ASAP and ASAP Rocky and the whole ASAP mob and all that. You don't have no influences from them or I your say, influences come more from upstate? I say, yeah, I say um, Mace, you know, um, mm. Can Ron, you mm. know, um, Big L. You know, I used to spend half the summers at Harlem, you know, 9-9, 2000, 2001. I was young, so I was outside. You know, I remember listening to SDE when it first came out. Yes, sir. And the cover, it was the NBA logo, but I believe we had the, the gun on the joint. Mm-hmm. So I remember that. I was I was a kid. I was, mm-hmm. you know, doing what I wasn't supposed to be doing, but I was outside. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when three uh what's the joint with DMX three fifty seven? Is that the joint? Well no, three fifty seven is uh that was on a Wu soundtrack, right? It was maybe um the joint with um DMX is called Pull It. I Pull it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. On DMX, Pull it. Yeah, I remember when that came out, that was around Confessions of Fire and all that. Oh, that was hard too. I'll... Yes, that was definitely Confessions of Fire. Came yeah. on first album. Yeah, so I was I was young, so you know those are like my influence musically and all that. You know, like cause I was outside and all that. So definitely. definitely, and then us talking about upstate, man, we gotta speak on who currently running that whole upstate market and running the game in terms of that boom bap hip hop. Griselda, you know Benny the Butcher, Conway, Westside Gun. And you know, you got cats like Rome Streets, uh 30 special, all that whole upstate movement. Are you influenced by those cats? Are you digging their music or their movements? Yeah, you know, you gotta respect it, especially coming from upstate, you no, know, you no know, Buffalo. Yes, you know, so, yes, so you gotta respect what they did, you know, for that city. Mm-hmm. For that, you know. So yeah, like yeah, I respect I respect everybody doing their thing. You know, it's only correct. right, you know. Word. Correct, correct. Now that's what's up. So right now, what project are you currently promoting and pushing? Right now I'm still promoting the um Good Food, Good Woman, Good Vibes, the album. I just released, um not just released, but um a couple months ago, I got the most improved player, the sequel, you know. Um, that was mostly like a lot of, like I said, I focus on my publishing company. So I want people to understand, like I'm more of a songwriter, right? But I had a lot of music, you know? So it's like, let me put this out, you know? A lot of tracks, I was experimenting with sounds and all that, you know? Just trying to see where I can take it as a writer. So if people go listen to that. I got a techno joint one of my producers made, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So I just wanted, you know, 
touch the waters. You know, it's not even a full song, but it's want to touch the waters and all that. I remember bringing this song. I was at a gambling spot, right? So mm. I told my dudes, I'm like, yo, me, yo, no, throw this song real quick. See what they think. They was bopping their head. I'm like, if I'm in a gambling spot, niggas bobbing their head to this. I'm like, okay, let me put this out. You feel me? So yes, sir. that's on there. Um, it's on all stream platforms. Um, a couple other joints is on there too as well. So people can check out the whole catalog. You know, just go to iTunes, go to Amazon, type in Chazo. You will get all that. That's what's up. Now, are you filming videos for this project? Not yet. Not mm-hmm. yet. Not yet. Um, I got s- something in the works and all that. You know, I mean, no COVID is kind of dying down, but. Mm-hmm. Smoky pox is crazy. <laughs> crazy. Nuts. <laughs> Word. Bananas. Word. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Word. Word. Nah, definitely. Now, I want to touch on the publishing aspect. You know what I mean? Because it seems like that's where you focus that. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, we done heard some of the nightmares of some of your favorite artists signing deals and getting um I want to say beat for the publishing raw for the publishing you know and um like for instance you got artists like Mace the Locks they did deals with Diddy at Bad Boy Records and they still fighting for their publishing to this day. Like, could you give all this insight on how these deals work so they don't get caught up in those situations? I would say, know what you want. Know what you want. You know, um, you know, you know the typical saying, get a good lawyer and everything, but you got to do some research too, you know? And now, as an artist, I'm an artist first before anything, you mm-hmm. know? So it was like, I know a lot of artists don't care about the, the business. <laughs> but, you know, me being young at an early age, I watched a lot of interviews. The first thing a lot of artists say, learn the business. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of artists say that. Artists still say that, so I took key to that. So, you know, just, just know what you want, you know, like, that's it you know know what you want um because it's with publishing it it's it's a lot to go with it you know you could you could you could sell a song like i take me for example right i'm a songwriter i could sell a song you know one off you know it's called work for hire you don't get no rights you don't get nothing you just get a check you know up front check Upfront front check that's called work for hire you know mm-hmm. You can have a song in the stash. You like somebody, I want to buy your song, whatever. You can do that. You know, um, it's a lot to go with it. You know, um, you got co publishing deals, you got administration deals, um, you got different agencies that, like Harry Fox Agency, right? They focus on mechanical royalties. Mm. That's when you. Well, every time you every time you sell an album, you're supposed to get paid a royalty for that. Correct. You know, so it's different agencies you can sign up with. You got um, Song Trust. You know, now I'm not. I'm just giving people an example. I'm not advertising on You know, um, gotcha. now one thing I learned as a songwriter, you know, you gotta be, you gotta have documentation. You gotta have documentation, so you gotta have that split sheet when you writing for others i lost out on a lot of that you know just you know like knowing but you know thinking things go go one way hold on let me let me interject real quick so you wrote some songs for some artists and didn't do the split sheets right yeah i never i never Mm -hmm. did split sheet you know i ain't gonna say no names but i never did a split sheet you know but i i knew better but mm. like, I wanted to get my name out there a little bit, you know, more behind the scenes and everything. Oh, let me let me let me just say this in a way. So you wrote 
maybe for some songs that got some traction, like for some major artists. That's what you implying? Independent. Okay. You know, you know I ain't go. I ain't want to put nothing out there, but mm. you know, independent. You know, but like I said, everything's a learning experience. You know. Got you. Mm -hmm. you no, know, like I watch um documentaries, um Sinatra, right? Documentary mm -hmm. where you know when he was coming up, you know he did he did shit for free, just putting mm -hmm. it out, you know, just mm -hmm. the people know who he is. He ain't care about the money, you know. So that's how he got his start, you know, early on. So he paid his dues pretty much. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. He grinded it out. Right, you gotta yeah. grind it out. So. That's why you know I, I I read a lot, especially a lot of artists back then, seventies and eighties, sixties, whatever. You know, so you can take you can take gems from that. You know, this been going around since the eighties. You know, yes, Cadillac Records. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts, man. Nah. And that's why I always wanted to um, you know, learn the business. You know, early on. So you know, if I give advice to anybody, you know, even coming up you know like yo you feel me so definitely my brother so let's say you get in the zone right and you start writing crazy records going crazy right for yourself and major artists in the game and these joints become hits and all that now your catalog is crazy then a a major company a publishing company comes and be like yo we want to um, buy your whole catalog for, say, like 50 million. You know what I mean? Because Herb got it. He just got a uh, $100 million deal. It was 300 altogether, but they bought half his publishing for 100 million. Uh, but say, like, you get one of those type of situations. Are you looking to uh, work yourself? in that position where you able to cash out at a certain number or you just going, you know, hold on to it and just let the uh, royalties come from, I guess, the spins and everything else. I can never say never. Mm -hmm. No. You know, like I said, you, you got to know what you want. You know, I've been a music business, you know, you know, beats and everything, doing okay. numbers. You know, so and he got with the tails joint too, right? So yes, sir. believe all that, you know, it's intertwined and all that. So, you know, with me, I would say that, you know, like I said, I can never say never, but mm -hmm. you know, I I rather sign a, right now a, a licensing deal. Like I, I signed mm -hmm. a licensing deal before, right? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I got a couple offers, but it's more of a nice. pro rate, a pro rate deal for licensing you know they don't they don't own nothing you know you just licensing it out got an offer three offers i just saw nice congrats the so we you know so it was you know that's what i that's what i like doing licensing deals mm, that's gotcha. you know but um i don't want to give up the, the it depends it depends you know it depends you know i like control over everything i like you know having control over my music, you know, I don't want it to get you no know, too crazy. Like administration deal, you know, some artists sign administration deals when they, you know, they just give ten percent away. But it's all about leverage. Mm. You know, if nobody know you, you know, you will have to play ball. You know, so it's all about you know what you can bring to the table. Got you. You know, yeah. Let me ask you this now: in terms of artists or CEOs, that's making major moves on the publishing side and the licensing deals and all that who you look up to or who in that field you influenced by because it's a lot of people that that's making moves you know the whole publishing deals and, and the licensing deals and all that you got some um artists or ceos that you influenced by? Yeah, I look at like um, I call him an artist or a composer, like uh, Quincy Jones. Mm, yes, sir. Legend. You know, you know, he was a songwriter, a composer. 
you know, he's a he's a legend, definitely an icon. You know, you know he he made he wrote songs when he was in his forties, in his fifties. Right. What right. Thriller wrote, like Thriller in his fifties, I believe. Him and Michael Jackson, they they produced that project. So so that's that's the, you know, the songwriters composers I look at, you know, that I mm-hmm. that I idolize, you know. Facts. As a songwriter, you're not in the front. So your pen is always going to beat your pen. If your pen right, you good. You can last generations. <laughs> you know? Correct. Um, even songwriters like Smokey Robinson. Mm, you know, I, that's incredible what, songwriter. Yeah, that's who I look that's at. Incredible. Facts. I look now, at. You, you mentioned some major legends. Smokey Robinson, Quincy Jones. Now, those are definitely uh, two artists that I definitely, uh, and producers that, and songwriters that I definitely look up to, and they're legends, and wrote some of the most incredible records, iconic records that we know today. Right. So that's, you know that, I mean? yeah, that's who, you know, I look up to. That's who I, you know, I like. You know, I like that answer. Art, a lot. Business and songwriting, you know? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Dope. That's, dope. That's what's up. So let the people know how they can follow you and, you know, I guess tap into your music and all that, giving your social media and some of the platforms where they can find your music. Instagram, Chazo underscore FMP. That's C H A Z O underscore FMP. The business page, FMP underscore LLC. All my music is on all streaming platforms, iTunes, Amazon, Tidal, um, my business email is on my uh, both Instagram pages. So any music supervisors hit me up. You know, got a lot of music out there. Just reach out. I like your boy. No doubt. That's what's up. Yeah, this your boy Chad Zo, Flow Music Publishing. I'm live with my guy Nrec TV. Shout out to Nrec. Salute.